the motorcade is slowing down as they approach the church. You've got to see at least a dozen motorcycles at the front of the motorcade there and a huge crowd of people assembled to pay their final respects to the senator. Yeah, I, I know we have uh, anchor Mark Curtis who is out there live right now. I'm wondering if we can send things over to him and kind of get an idea of what things are looking like from his perspective. We'll see if we can get Mark on the horn in just a minute here. Mark, are you there? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay. Um, I can hear the helicopters overhead as we wait here outside the Phoenix Baptist Church and um, that helicopter can only signal that the Senator's hearse is close as the journey comes close to an end. Uh, it's not quite over yet, but this soldier, this brave and valiant man that fought for our country and then fought for the right thing in the halls of Congress for so long is almost home. Uh, he will come here for a beautiful service this morning, but it'll only be a short layover. And then from there, the senator will make his way to Washington for the final time. And guys, think for a second how many times Senator McCain, who loved Arizona, came home as often as he could, made that flight from Phoenix to Washington. Later on today, he'll make that flight to Washington for the final time. And uh, I want to just take some shots behind us because we understand that the hearse is now pulling up. Uh, I can see the motorcade pulling up that is leading the hearse with the senator's body. Later on tonight, John McCain's body will rest in the rotunda at the U.S. Capitol, whose halls he roamed and roared in for so long. A man who believed in compromise and that democracy has to have collaboration to thrive. As Republicans in 2018 moved further to the right and Democrats further to the left, McCain believed civility, compromise, and respect for the center was vital for our country moving forward. The beginning now of this brief layover for the senator before he makes his way to Washington and all of the purses and limos carrying Senator McCain's body, Senator McCain's body here, the North Phoenix Baptist Church now rolling up behind us. And it is a somber, emotional feeling for all of us that knew the Senator and covered him for so long to believe that this voice, this great voice of America, a man who fought for the voiceless, has left us. And this man can rest easy, guys, knowing that his legacy is intact. A legacy of honor, valor, integrity, compromise, and respect. And there we see Cindy McCain, the late senator's wife, with one of her sons, and the rest of the McCain children and family being greeted by well-wishers as they make their way from the limo into the church for what is sure to be a gut-wrenching but at the same time uplifting day. This was a very spiritual family and for so long they had actually you have to go back to April and sources now tell us that as early as April, Senator McCain started making calls to the people that he wanted involved in this service today, calls to people that he wanted to be his pallbearers. And about a half hour ago, while we were in studio with Emma and Paul and Marshall Trimble, who added so much to our coverage this morning, uh, the pallbearers were out here practicing, and I saw Shane Doan, the great Coyotes captain for so long, and I saw Luis Gonzalez and, and so many others. Uh, as we all know, guys, the senator was a huge sports fan, loved the Diamondbacks, loved the Coyotes, loved the Cardinals. And as Emma mentioned earlier, Larry Fitzgerald said one of the most daunting and humbling things that he's ever been granted was the honor to speak at McCain's funeral today. And we'll hear that and we'll bring it to you all live here on 12. You can see the honor guard now assembled, waiting to take possession of the senator's casket, where it will be brought into the sanctuary 
and where services will begin. On a personal level, I, I always took, took it for granted that the Senator would be here forever. Obviously, I knew the reality that he would pass on from this dreadful, terrible disease, this brain cancer that he fought for 13 months. But his presence was so large, he was one of those larger-than-life figures that to know that his body is gone is very tough. I can't help but think back this morning. Someone asked me earlier, what did you, what did you personally, as a reporter, admire most about John McCain? And, and I guess my answer is, I was envious of so many of his qualities that I don't have. Uh, his bravery under fire. We all like to believe that if the chips were down, we could be brave and upstanding and, and loyal to a fault. But most of us, and I thank God for it, would never be put to that test. The test that John McCain was when he was shot down over Vietnam at the height of the war and captured by evil people that meant to interrogate him and tortured him for five and a half years. And that he also had the guts when he was offered an early release to say, no, there are people here who have been here longer than me and I'm not going home until all of my comrades do. People that forever were linked to John McCain and forever indebted to him for his bravery and service. The North Vietnamese captors knew what a prize they had in John McCain. They tried so often to break him and to manipulate him and to use him for propaganda. But in the end, and John McCain talked about this in his book, that you, you, you always want to be the person that, that never breaks. And that he, like he did on so many other occasions in his life going forward, admitted that they did eventually break him. As you look at so many of the sports figures and notables that will be here as his pallbearers in just moments. Kurt Warner, the great, great quarterback for the Cardinals who took them to the Super Bowl. Right next to him, Luis Gonzalez. Opposite them, and I don't know if we can get a shot of Shane Dunn, the Coyotes captain, for so many years. A who's who of Arizona dignitaries and a reflection of who John McCain was in his life. Politician, statesman, sports fan extraordinaire. A man who loved life, loved his family, who gave and received love in, in equal portions, was beloved by his colleagues, feared by his enemies, but a man who, while he had a large bark, was always fair. He would fight for sure for the things that he thought were important. And he loved a good fight. He loved a good fight. But if he was wrong, if he was out of line, he misspoke, he was always very quick, whether it was a, with a politician or a member of the media, to come up afterwards and say, hey, I was wrong, I overstated it, I shouldn't have said it that way, we're good, and to stick out his hand. And it was all settled at that point. As Marshall Trimble mentioned earlier this morning, the senator was a tenacious wrestler at the Naval Academy, and he was also a boxer. And, and I think that that fighting spirit is what carried him through life, both as a, a military member, a fighter jockey, a prisoner of war, and a feared but respected politician. A man who failed twice in his bid for the White House, but never gave up. That dogged determination, I think, help define the man that John McCain was, and it's one of the reasons that he is so revered and so missed here on this Thursday morning as he begins his long journey home to Washington. And now you can see Cindy McCain accompanied by her sons and family coming out where his body will now be taken out of the hearse and brought into the church for this service this morning. Again, you're watching live coverage here on 12 News. We appreciate your joining us this morning as the McCains and
Arizona and the rest of the country say goodbye to this great man. And sadly, it should be pointed out that McCain is survived by his mother. And oftentimes, and every parent that's watching this morning knows this, no parent should ever have to bury their child. But his mother, who's 106, I believe, will have to bury her son, John. And now you see the purse being opened and the body will be pulled out. And those pallbearers who have the honor of carrying his body into the church, all of them very somber, all of them had special and unique relationships with the senator, will have that great honor as the honor guard now makes its way out onto the curb and onto the street where the body will be taken from the hearse. Let's watch. All branches of the military represented in this honor guard. And years from now, all of these men involved here will have an incredible story to tell, that they had the great honor of helping to bring the senator home to his resting place here in Phoenix before the body makes its home, way home to Washington. We can just see our first glimpse the flag-draped coffin of Senator John McCain. John Sidney McCain has been well chronicled. Born into Navy royalty, the son of an admiral, the grandson of an admiral, a man whose career path in the military was destined from day one that he would go into the Navy, where he became a fighter pilot. And then we were lucky enough here in Arizona have him decide to come here and make Arizona his home. First as a congressman, and then for over three decades as a senator. The honor guard now taking his body into the church the pallbearers outside lined up. And the service, which we will broadcast shortly here on 12, will begin as soon as the senator's body is brought in. I will tell you on a personal level, my heart breaks for, for Cindy McCain and all of her kids today. She has been so strong through this whole thing.